We're given a function, f of x is sine of x squared plus cosine x. And then we're given a funny sort of graph, and I'll talk about that graph later. Because what emerges as we look at the questions is that this is really all about Taylor series. We're trying to create Taylor series based on similar and more primitive Taylor series and then combining Taylor series, using Taylor series to figure out a derivative. And then the last part is about the Lagrange error bound. So this is the sort of information that's going to prove useful. I've said Taylor series, but in this case all of the Taylor series are centered about x equals zero, and so just they could have just as well been called Maclaurin series. So let's take a look at what we're up against. Start with A. We have to write the first four non-zero terms of the Taylor series for sine x about x equals zero. This is purely something that we have to memorize. Okay, so we learn earlier on, hopefully, that sine of x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial minus x7 over 7 factorial. It goes on, obviously forever, but they asked for the first four terms. First four terms. Now, what they then ask is to use this as a foundation, it doesn't say it explicitly in the question, but this is what's implied, to now build up the Taylor series for sine of x squared. So, I'm going to write similarly, sine of x squared, again, we substitute x squared for this, minus x squared for the next place where x appears, x squared cubed over 3 factorial, plus we insert x squared for the next place where x appeared in the original formula, 5 factorial minus x squared to the seventh power over 7 factorial, and again, first four terms. And that's what's asked for in A. I suppose if we wanted to, we could further write this out as x to the 6th, x to the 10, x to the 14. But again, the simplification is not the key thing that's being graded on. Okay, that takes care of part A. Part B asks a similar question for cosine x. So first, we're going to write the first four uh, non-zero terms of the Taylor series for cosine x. One, again, this is something we simply have memorized. Now having done this, again notice what we've done. We first created the Taylor series for sine of x squared. Now they've asked us to take create the Taylor series for cosine of x. And so by combining the two we can start to get the first several terms of the Taylor series for this combined function. And so I'll write combining f of x, what do they ask for? Let's see. The first four non-zero terms for the Taylor series of this. f of x is, okay, so what's the first term? It's, it's going to be the 1. 
Now what's the next term? Well, it's a combination of the x squared that we see here, the negative x squared over 2 factorial that we see here. This is really 1x squared minus a half x squared equals a half x squared. So we've combined these two terms that are uh, that have squares drawn around them. Okay, now what's the next term? Well, the next term is an x to the fourth term. We don't have an x to the fourth term here, so we just write this one. And then what? Well, then we have x to the sixth terms. We have one here, x to the sixth over three factorial. Notice it's negative. And we also have x to the six over six factorial, and it's also negative. So the whole thing is negative something x to the sixth. And what we get is uh, 1 over 3 factorial from here and 1 over 6 factorial from here. Remembering that I pulled the minus sign out front. Okay, that is part B. Now, we could simplify this to get well, what do we do? We get a common denominator. This is 1 over 6. This is 1 over 720. How do you rewrite 1 over 6 to have the same denominator as 720? You write it as 120 over 720 plus 1 over 720. And you get 121 over 720 for this coefficient, which is the same as... 121 over 6 factorial. Okay, remembering there's a negative sign there. But again, simplification is not what's being graded. We could have left it like that. So let's see what is asked for in part C. Find the value of the sixth derivative of the function. Now, this may seem like a daunting task because. Initially, you think, well, gee, I take the derivative of this six times, and then I plug in zero to see what this is. And when I take the derivative of this, I'll have to use the chain rule, so there'll be a 2x out in front, which means the next time I take the next derivative, I'll have to use the product rule. And in fact, it's a very complicated function. But that is not what they're expecting us to do. Instead, they're expecting us to remember this general form of the Taylor series. So, if you want the sixth derivative at zero, it's the coefficient that's next to the sixth power of the expansion divided by n factorial. That actually should be a factorial, and I'm not sure that that comes through, so I'm just going to put the dot there. There we go. What I'm really saying is we just figured out that f of x has a term negative 121 over 6 factorial x to the 6. And that has to be the same as the sixth derivative at 0 x to the sixth over six factorial. I'm going to just write out how I know that. The above equality comes from matching terms. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to move up to here, so let's kind of box this graph out. Let's say C continued. We're matching terms. We're matching terms for the particular 
series f of x and the general formula for a Taylor series. Okay, that's where this equality comes from. The particular term we found for f of x that was x to the sixth power and what we know generically about Taylor series when we've got the sixth power over six factorial what's left is the sixth derivative. Okay. Therefore, the negative 121 equals F60. Six, six. So that's our answer there for C. Okay, finally, the last part. This is the Lagrange error bound. Now, nowhere does it mention Lagrange, but what it does say is we'd like you to prove a bound. Okay. Now, How do we know it's an error bound? Well, what we know is they give us this expression P4 at a quarter minus F at a quarter. The absolute value of the difference between those two things. What's P4? P4 is the approximation. F of a quarter is the actual value. Okay. And so the difference between the, act, the approximation and the actual value, the absolute value of that, is the error. So, this represents the error. The error between our approximation and the actual value is this. Now, since we know that's an error, we know the error is less than the Lagrange error bound. Let's just say this error is less than or equal to the Lagrange error bound. Okay, now here we have a formula for the Lagrange error bound. It's a rather complicated formula, I admit, and this is really not the point or the time to go into the details of that. But suffice it to say that the Lagrange error bound tells us a upper bound on the total error. And so this error we know is less than, uh, let's write it out again, P4 of a quarter minus F of a quarter. That's the absolute value of the error. It's less than or equal to what? The value of the derivative at the worst possible point. We'll talk more about that in a second. Times the value of the uh, x minus the center point that we're working with to the n plus 1 power. X here is a quarter, our center point is 0. So we have uh, 1 quarter to the fifth power. And we divide by 5 factorial. So why do we know that n plus 1 is 5 in all of these cases? Because we had a fourth degree approximation. The Lagrange error bound is the next higher value of n. It's the fifth. So what we need is the maximum value of the fifth derivative on this interval. Well, that's finally where this graph comes in. This is, this is the graph of the absolute value of the fifth derivative of 
the function. And what's the highest value that it has over the interval between zero and a quarter? Well, it looks like right about there. And I don't know, maybe that's maybe 35. But I know for sure that it's, um, if 35 is the worst case, then saying 40, which is safer because this 40 line is right here, that's an even uh, higher error bound. So if I can prove what I need to prove just choosing 40, then I don't have to worry about deciding if this is 35 or 36 or whatever. And in fact, I can do that because if you put in 40, a quarter to the fifth over 5 factorial, you get a part in uh, 3072. I don't know how anybody did that calculation without a calculator, but I'm just uh, reiterating what's in the scoring guidelines. And that number is certainly less than a part in 3000, which is what we were asked to prove. So I'll put those little three dots, meaning we prove what you asked us to prove. Again, Lagrange error bound is a little tricky. And you may want to look at the specific video I've made that teaches it in more detail. But hopefully this gives you a feel for how it's applied into a particular problem. Hope this helped.